Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you tuning in once again. So we were working on our little monogram pace car, the 1979 Mustang. The one I cut the doors off. Uh, the one I made it into a T-top car. And I thought, you know what? While I'm cutting, I might as well take and cut the trunk out of her, the hatch, and make it a little deeper because the original car is uh, a little more, has more depth to it because the model is kind of shallow. So I did that. And on top of it, I decided to cut the hatch off it. Yeah, I thought, hey, why not? Why we're cutting? Let's just one more item. Why not? And why I'm cutting it, I thought, hmm, yep, that looked pretty cool. So I'm holding on to it, and I end up dropping it because my hands, I drop stuff all the time. So anyways, I thought, hey, I'm going to catch it. Well, I should just let it hit the floor because what happens when I caught it, I gripped it, and what happens? I broke the A-pillar off, the windshield is gone. It's, I broke it right off. And I broke one of the rocker pieces off. Uh, so it's just kind of hanging there. It's it's in rough shape. It's not looking too good. But you know what? We can fix it. Not a big deal. Uh, now I don't have to be as careful with doing the doors and stuff because now if I break it, well, it's already broke. So that's not a big deal. <laughs> so anyways, I'm figuring, okay, now I got open hatch, open doors. We got T-tops. I thought, man, this interior is going to have to look killer on this thing because it's going to be very noticeable. Uh, obviously, you're going to make it look noticeable with the doors open. Uh, so I was watching a muscle car modeler's video. This He did this a while back. Uh, he took and made, uh, he took the halo headrest of an 83 convertible model and he put the mesh in there. And I thought, ooh, that looks pretty cool. So I thought, I'm going to do that myself. My first time trying this and it didn't turn out too bad. Uh, there's a few things I learned from it, so I thought I'd show you in a video some things that I should have did or paid attention a little, you know, a little more attention on uh, to get them just nice, nice. But you know, next time, next time. Uh, so, anyways, I thought, you know what? We'll take it one step further. We'll make them adjustable, and I thought that looked really cool. So, I'll take you over the bench side, and we'll get started on it, and I'll show you how I did it. Um, maybe it's a better way. Maybe you guys have better luck with it, or. Uh, have a different way of doing it but this worked pretty good and uh we'll go from there so let's take you over and uh, let's get started on and they're not working on the seats so i cut the center of the halos out because there is a mesh in here uh just the recaros had the mesh um because i have halo headrest in my car they always call them the halos halo seats and the later ones did not have the mesh in only the earlier ones that was like the recaro type seat uh, they had the the mesh and actually the mesh was a dual mesh if i remember right had like a mesh in the front and then back okay guys so i ended up getting this cut out so how i ended up doing that is i took the scribe blade uh that little scriber which is here and i just kept working it back and forth just kept digging digging it didn't take much to pop through it i did the same to the back i put this up so i wasn't leaning on it and did the same thing, scribe here. I scribed and I scribed and scribed. So I was on all four corners. Uh, so then I took and scribed a piece in the middle. And then a piece on the side. So basically punched a hole in it. And I was able to just take the knife and just slowly work my way around uh, to kind of carve it out. So now I'm going to do is cut this. So what I did is I've uh, been taking this blade with the, the teeth on it. And I'm just slowly working my way around. So if you just go to the top and just work your way down, the C has a little angle to it. Uh, so it's going to want to just cut it off to the side. So you kind of be careful. So what I did is I just took this to the side and just slowly worked it back and forth, keeping it in the center, just so I got a nice little mark there. Same to the top. And then I flipped over. So the side here I haven't started yet. So I just kind of picked the center. Uh, the seat does have a, a, a mold line in there, so it kind of helps out. You can just follow that. Uh, but being I start on the top here, I just kind of go in there. And then just work my way down until I get it somewhat flush. And just take my time with it and just walk it back and forth. All right, guys, so I got that cut out. Uh, so you can see I took the blade all the way down. And I'm actually into the bottom of the seat. I just kept working it back so you can see I'm down into the bottom uh, bottom section there. So obviously when doing that we left a little bit of fraying on the end of the plastic. So before I cut the mesh uh, I'm going to take a little sandpaper. So I just took some of the brass 
uh, rolled a little sandpaper up on the brass tubing and we're just going to work that in there a little bit from the corners being careful not to distort or mess anything up too much and don't take much now this is 600 I don't want to sit here all day with some fine fine paper um, like I say this will get painted and everything in the end so it should look pretty good and I'll take a little paper and go on the outside just a little bit uh, just smooth that out so it looks pretty good take a little burr on the side here uh, so we're gonna take and slip some mesh in there so what I'm using for my mesh is a paint filter paint strainer so that'll look pretty nice so I'm gonna cut this out put it in there and I think that look pretty cool yeah I think it'll look good so our seat started out like this so that's where we started out with you can see that has the mesh in there so this is a nice fine mesh I think it'll look pretty good so I can slice the top uh, and that way I can cut this and slip it down in there and then go ahead and paint the whole thing black so once I get it painted and then I can decal these because I, I could get the seats done now just be done with them and uh, just await the rest of the interior to get put together while I'm working on the body work. All right guys, so I cut the filter up with my handy nanny scissors. So I'm gonna utilize the straight edge down here uh, so I can put it along the bottom here. So that's a nice looking screen right there. That'd look great in there. So I just gotta figure a little bit, even if I'm a little wider, um, I can always trim it once it's in there. So we're just gonna take our handy Sharpie and not get too carried away. Do a little test run here, see if it, yep. Make sure it don't bleed across, you know, how you hit some types of thing and it just wicks its way across. You're like, no, so we're good there. Uh, so we'll use this corner here. We'll take it to the bottom, because this way here, once I get the somewhat the size, uh, and then we can trim it from that point. So I'll just get it close. Careful. So I want to keep it to the outside. Uh, that way it fits obviously in there the way it should. And I hope I didn't just screw myself up right there. But it's getting painted black anyways. So it should be alright. Alright, so I'll just take and cut this out. My handy dandy scissors. That looks pretty good. So now, if all goes well, this should just slip inside there like so. Something like so. And we'll take and put a little putty on the edge here, let that cure up, we'll sand it, and then we can go ahead and paint it, and they'll give us a nice mesh seat. Cheap and easy, because you can get this at any auto parts store, any place that sells automotive paint. Uh, I think even a lot of hardware stores might even carry these. All right, guys, so we cut that down and slipped that in. That worked perfect. And I just knocked it out because I wiped it. <laughs> oh, I gotta love it. Loving it. Uh, I got a little burr right there, so I just cut that with my finger and peeled it right out of there. Probably should cut that off. And we'll slide that back in there. Ah, I love that part. That's where you know you're supposed to edit this stuff, but you know what? This is sometimes how real world real world things happen. So let's slip this back in here. So that worked, it worked pretty good. So you can actually see how this went in. So I just tagged it down in there. And boop, just like that. So... I was trying to just push it down a little further so it was flush. So there we have it. There we go. So yeah, so that turned out pretty cool. I put this clamp on here once that was in there. And I put just a little bit of glue on the edge here. Just kind of help seam that back together. Uh, it's not obviously 100% going to hold it true but um, it'll be a little easier than um, trying to glue there put my stuff on a big wide piece so all right guys we got that puttied up and like I say we're just gonna let that cure uh, probably overnight and we'll try it again tomorrow as I'm sitting here um, trying to work on something else I thought you know I'm gonna pull some pictures up these seats uh, to see if there's different color in here uh, so the seat actually has uh, this is more of a cloth in here and along this piping this is like vinyl 
Uh, and looking closer at the pictures, I thought this was more of a zebra print. It's basically just a white and black um, line that goes across there. The zebra print will work okay. Um, it'll be fine. But I did notice in the picture, so you notice I cut the headrest off. So there we have that sitting there. So I cut this off and I did a little sanding on it. Took my sanding stick and just kind of feathered it around, made it look pretty. Did the same thing here. And these actually have um, rods that come up here so the seat can lift up and down. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these rods in here. So I'm going to drill the hole in here first. Because uh, looking at prototype pictures, it looks like the, the rods are close to the inside of here. So I'm going to put them in first and then uh, we'll line this up to here and then we'll mark it here versus doing it here. Then I'd, my luck will be way off to the side or something uh, and go from there. So I'm going to do is drill two small holes in the seat and then I'll line the two holes up. I'll put some bars or some uh, round stock in there, some bars, and then we'll finish it off the other way. And uh, yeah, I think that looked cool. So I kind of want the seats to look pretty nice being it's going to be open hatch, open door, T-top. So I want the seats to stick out really nice because uh, obviously you're going to really notice them. So uh, for what they are, you know, I'm going to try to detail them best I can, uh, do best I can with them. I almost should do is make one where it's tipped back or something, you know, like cut the seat off and had it like it's folded back. Uh, but I already got enough going with the project as it is, so... I will make it a lot more than I got going. So what I'm going to do is drill this out. Uh, this is kind of fragile to hang on to. So I'm going to try to mark this out with uh, the mark, the Sharpie, so I can kind of get the holes even. And we can go from there. So like I say, they were pretty much right at the inside of this. Let's see if we're close. That looks pretty good there. I don't want to mark too good. So I can see this one needs to come in just a little bit. Now I gotta figure out what rod I'm gonna use uh, for the. I like using this piano wire, this um, KNS wire. Uh, but this here is actually pretty thick, it looks like. So we can go pretty good size. Looks like it's a pretty good stout uh, piece, maybe even something like this. So I gotta see if this looks somewhat natural on there. Yeah, I think that'd do the job. It looks pretty good because it's it's a pretty big rod they show on the all right we're gonna get this drilled out all right guys so we got two holes drilled and i cut some rod so what i'm gonna do is glue those in so we'll make sure they're nice and straight so like i say once i glue these i'll just take and mark this uh where they're supposed to be um or even set this down here and then mark it i'm not sure i'm gonna do it yet and We'll get that drilled. Yeah, so I think that looked pretty cool. And I know painting this, these are going to be, end up being black. Um, but also it's nice because it'll give me something to hold on to while I am painting them. So I may even do, uh, I might even put something on there like a little bit of, um, take a little bit WD-40 on a cotton or like a Q-tip and wipe this down. And that'll keep the paint from sticking to it. And it'll keep that nice chrome look, and they, they won't rust on me once they're in the car. <laughs> so uh, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to get this done, and uh, get this drilled, and I'm going to paint the seat. Let me get this drilled out and glued in, and I'll bring you back. All right, guys. So I ended up taking the back of the seat off. So thankfully it wasn't on overwhelmingly hard. Because I noticed as I was drilling it, I'm tapping into the back of the seat a little bit. So plus this made it a little easier. So I had to move my holes over just a little bit. Um, I figured that was going to be pretty hard to line that up. So now we can stick this in here. And plus we can kind of see the, the operation of the seat. So it looks pretty good. Line this up a little bit here. I think I'm off just a shade over, but I don't know if you're really going to notice it. Something like that. So once I put the back on here, that'll keep that from being overly loose. So I might have to shave the back down just a little bit to make that fit. So what I'm doing to keep that a little on the looser side is I took the blade. Um, I took this here, the chisel blade. 
this guy and I open that up inside there uh, just a little bit and be careful not to go through it obviously so I might do is on this side here you can see where those were popping through as I drilled it I'll just take and just you know file some of this off on the end here just a little bit um, just so it still will work but not um, to where it's like fighting it because I only need to do these spots here where it goes down I probably could hook the Dremel up and use a wheel. It'd probably be easier, but it's like one in the morning, one thirty in the morning. I just don't feel like it. It's one of those. There's a hard way. I'll find her. Shave a little bit off here. Shave's pretty easy. I don't want it to where it's gonna stick out, you know, or make the seat stick sideways or whatnot. So I'm gonna work on that, and I think that looks pretty cool. I may even just leave it positioned just one way and just tighten it down and color good. So I glue the seat in there, I kind of like it lifted a little bit. Uh, I might even do that, just glue it down the way it is right now and it'll just hold it in place for me. I'm going to leave it stationary. Because um, I had to slide this over a little bit because I wasn't quite even. So once I get this kind of where I want it, um, I'm going to paint everything and I'm going to put this on last. So that way there, once I put this on... I can maneuver this where I want it. So I'm actually going to pull it up a little bit like that and then glue it down. And I'm going to leave it just like that. So it looks pretty good. So that's how we're going to do it. Because I got thinking, what's, what's the point of making a move up and down? I mean, once it's built, and I don't plan on like playing with it or anything. So it's, uh, it's just for looks. So that's what we're going to do. So like I said, I made this a little side to side because I'm, I'm off just a little bit. Because uh, that's actually pretty hard to drill that. Because this is all rounded. So I started with taking my X-Acto and give myself a little bit of a pilot. I was looking for something sharp like a pick or all or something that would work good. I could just give myself a little bit of a guide. Uh, but yeah, so this is ready to go. My only disappointment with this is I can see there's something right here in the mesh. And I know I didn't drill that far into it. But I don't want to start picking at it because I might rip that. But once I paint that, it might not be really noticeable because that's a black from the Sharpie. So uh, this is ready to paint and the seat's ready to paint. Like I said, we're going to paint this separate. Uh, hopefully that works all right, all right for me. And we'll go from there. So I want to get one seat done and then I'll go to the second seat. So that's how we're doing it. All right, I'm going to paint it and I'll bring it back. All right, guys, so we got the one painted. And the other one is done, so I gotta get that into some paint. Uh, I had to fix a corner over here, had a little discrepancy, um, so I gotta clean that up, repaint it quick. And I ended up putting uh, rubber cement on here uh, to keep the paint from sticking, so that should pretty much wipe right off uh, when I get ready to. So I'm gonna do the same here, I got that gluing, uh, and we'll get that done. So we got this done, uh, we're getting ready to do the other side. So I got my holes drilled up top. So guys, like I was saying, I am taking the cutting this with this here. Just to kind of slice that out of there. So the main reason I did that is those headrests are going to have those rods going through there. So this would simulate that rod. So in order for that to go through okay, it's got to have a little bit of clearance. A little clearance, clearance. So if it wasn't like that, it would it would kick up like this and it's it'd be really tight. It'd bind against that. So that's the reason I had to cut that out of there. So now it fits nice and straight. And life is good. So like I say, this other headrest is ready to go. And I'm going to put a little bit of more of my rubber cement uh, on the metal. And that will keep it from getting paint on it. And we should be looking pretty good from there. And then we can start painting the inserts of the seats after the uh, black dries. And see how she looks. Alright guys, so that is our pair of headrests. So we'll stick them in the seat real quick and uh, give you a little demonstration of how they look. And there you have it guys. I think those look pretty cool. So you get your screen in the back. And next thing is you can adjust this a little bit. So you want it a little higher. You can adjust it up. So what I'm going to do is when I build this, I'm going to leave them up about that high. So the thing I don't like, and I should have paid more attention to this, is when I saw the uh, center of this out uh, in here 
and when I dropped the screen in I didn't realize it pushed a little bit of plastic out in the center here I tried cleaning most of it up but uh, some of it just didn't want to come out and of course at this point I already had it uh, cleaned up and glued and so I was trying to take a knife and clean that out of there um, but I was afraid of ripping that screen because I thought well, I don't want to start all over so anyways there's our Recaro seats for the Mustang uh, just now have to put the interior insets in and kind of go from there so see so yeah, ya I think those look pretty cool like I say this is going to be an open door open hatch open t-top so I want the seats to look really good in it so no matter what angle you look at it uh, the seats will look pretty sharp so there we go all right guys I appreciate you watching checking out the channel and uh, following along on this uh, next video I'll try to get the interior the inside of the seats done so at this point uh, you guys have a good one and thanks for watching we'll see you on the next video